Welcome everyone to the Brass Summer 2023 online symposium. I am Angel True, still the chair of the Business Reference and Academic Library Committee for Brass and the chair for the symposia subcommittee. Thank you to Christy Cunningham, Brian Garrison, and Christy Pollock. All sessions will be recorded and sent out to those who have registered. Please meet your audio and video as we get started. So thank you for spending your time with us today with our present tape, with our presenters. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Brian. Hello, welcome again, everyone. I'm Brian Garrison. And as Angel mentioned, this presentation is being recorded and will be shared with all those registered. For this presentation, feel free to put questions in the chat as the talk progresses. And please welcome our presenters, Nancy Lovas at UNC Chapel Hill and Teddy Stocking at the University of Nevada, Reno with their presentation, Training the Next Generation of Business Librarians. Take it away. Hi, everyone. I will ask the ever present question. Can you see my screen? I can. Great. Well, that's wonderful. Hello, everyone. My name is Nancy Lovis, and I work as the entrepreneurship and business librarian at UNC Chapel Hill. My name is Teddy Stocking. I'm the business research and instruction librarian at University of Nevada in Reno. And we're really excited to talk more about business information professional development and training opportunities um, and the different ways that that can look in both teaching classroom contexts and other, other fun contexts. So hopping right in, we have some learning outcomes since we are also educators in addition to being librarians. In our presentation today, we'll reflect on the training needs experienced by new business librarians and how your needs may or may not have been met. Uh, we'll talk about some different ways that current business librarians, so probably most of the folks in the room today, can positively impact training opportunities for new business librarians. And we'll also talk about strategies and resources for developing training opportunities uh, if you so desire to do that yourself. Great, we're gonna start soliciting a little feedback from y'all. Um, if you wouldn't mind, there is within the chat a uh, Padlet. I just posted it. Um, and there's three questions involved. The first is if you could describe about your first year working with business information in one word, you can use a hyphenated word too, if that's more comfortable. What would it be? Um, what is your first visceral memory of getting a business reference question? And um, what is the most useful thing that you learned in your early years of business information? And who taught it to you? So we're sort of assuming from uh, the first survey that the last presenter sent out that uh, you might have experienced your first business reference question on the job. So you can go back to that. If you can go back to library school, wherever you remember these things, feel free to uh, jump in there. Looks like we're getting a few comments. Um, one thing that I've really noticed recently, early conversations with young or uh, early career librarians, um, not everyone always recognizes that um, sort of the obvious truth of being a business librarian that um, it's very overwhelming to start. Uh, the isolated experience of being a business librarian often makes it feel, especially early on, that that um, feeling of bewilderment or fire hose uh, is, is, a, is a unique feeling to the specific business librarian. Um, I think that's part of why, as we discussed training uh, today, um, why this training is so helpful at any stage, whether it be um, actual teaching through academia or whether it be some sort of um, intervention early on in, in your library career. If there's any 
uh, of interest, either through Nancy or through the chat, feel free to uh, highlight any and, and I'll, I'll make sure to point them out as I scroll through them as well. I think Alan's comment here about feeling overwhelmed by specificity of data needs as compared to humanities reference questions. Um, yes, I have had that experience of I need this exact thing and that exact thing may or may not exist. I think there's also an interesting comment in the chat, MF, um, writing, I learned it on the job, not necessarily as a business librarian, but doing analysis for competitive intelligence. And that's possibly a rare experience for many of us um, going from sort of a, a research intensive mindset, possibly something in the humanities or social sciences is often what motivates um, people that pursue the MLS. And then realizing that business research is, is very different. Um, I had the opportunity and Nancy as well to, to do business economics um, coursework in our undergrads. But um, for many of us, even just understanding what the nature of business research is, what business information looks like, that's that's a huge uh, gap as well. So having that practical experience, compared competitive intelligence and then backing sort of into the library mindset, uh, definitely, definitely a rare opportunity for a business librarian. And then, yes, a few things mentioned within um, the most useful things we learned, a few things that I'd mentioned, and then uh, we could probably move on to the rest of our presentation. Um, the ALA e-course, I believe that's Business Reference 101. Um, there's also mention of Celia Ross's book, Making Sense of Business Reference, I assume it is, and uh, Brass Symposiums, what a novel idea. And then the last thing I think, um, mentioning many people mentioned a large dedicated network of professional support or finding a great mentor or um, learn learn who to ask for help right um all touching on this idea that business librarianship is uh almost impossible to practice as as a standalone shop without a supportive network and and without you know assistance from from the rest of us here. Thanks everyone for sharing your experiences. A little more about why we were wanting to talk about this topic. Uh, in our previous presentation, our colleagues talked about how their, none of their students wanted to be academic librarians, which baffles me a little bit because that's all I've wanted to be in library school. But in the last few years, I there have been over three dozen academics or just kind of business information jobs come through BizLib. And that's a lot of jobs. <laughs> There's also kind of anecdotally small, can small candidate pools for business related jobs. It's hard to hire, a lot of field searches. And also, as previously acknowledged, library and information science programs are teaching fewer library science or specialized reference classes in the last 10 to 20 years. And so let's talk about how to, how and if we can at all help fix this problem of where are the business librarians going to come from. So in addition to our learning outcomes, we have kind of three rough sections uh, Teddy is going to talk about professional development training modules. I will talk about my experience teaching a library and information science graduate class in business information, and then we'll turn it to the room for the last section and talk about self-directed learning and other kind of crowdsourcing ideas for what we can do as, as a professional community. Great. So um, in the spring of 2020, I had a semester of business librarian experience. I started uh, in the fall 2019 year as a business librarian uh, after graduating from UNC Sills. Um, 
but I found great support and opportunities within the Capital Area Business Academic Librarians Group, which is a regional group that focuses on um, business librarianship and topics related to business librarianship within the DC area, the Capital Area. And at the time, Cabal put out a call to join a task force intended to create what they call the Business Library Bootcamp, but we also just thought basically as an intro to business librarianship module or uh, course. And that's if you'd advance to the next slide. And so before I speak on what we as Cabal did in our course, I want to just mention a few other phenomena um, in our collective experience as the task force, a few experiences that we had as being business librarians. Um, Nancy will speak after me on a fantastic, grounded, pedagogical approach to training students who want to become business librarians or who are interested in the idea of business reference at the college level. You just heard a great presentation on that as well. Um, but what we were, at, aiming to do in Cabal um, was sort of more of a practical limited curriculum for uh, business reference practitioners uh, who were, as somebody said in the Padlet, drinking from the fire hose. Um, and with that in mind, I think the first thing that we all discussed was how um, business librarianship is quite gated. It's not really uh, a walled garden that we've created. It's sort of more like the gates have been put around us. Um, and something Nancy and I talk about often uh, when we do research or when we have conversations with that, with other business librarians is how much support you get. Um, basic, And we basically ask it always in the form of if somebody sends a reference question with a dollar sign, um, will anyone answer that email but you? And, and we sort of come up with this basic idea that when it comes to business reference, a dollar sign is a forwarded email. Um, and without classes like Nancy's or the one at University of Washington we just heard, um, it's hard to become a business librarian. It's isolating. People are self-conscious of it, not self-conscious in a way that they doubt themselves, but you're very aware of the practice when you're doing it. Again, if the limit is a dollar sign, if that's the gate to be a business librarian, then yes, it's um, it's very self-aware. And then also um, that degree of un how unexpected things can be, how um, uncertain things are, data sources, and what's a good research question with easy answers and what's a hard research question, very little can separate the two at the face value. Um, and if we think back to our first year as business librarians, I'm sure many of us have that uh, sense of uncertainty, that sense of um, low understanding of information horizon or information pathway, those kind of words that we talk about in um, library school. So it's very hard to know if you're doing a good job, I would say. That's that's sort of the kicker to all this. So um, when we went into this, we went under that those assumptions. It's intimidating for a new librarian. And in many cases, it's intimidating for departmental colleagues at your institution. Um, and oftentimes they have they don't know how to help. So um, put it another way, essentially, the knowledge gap is not that librarians don't understand business or business reference. It's more so that often librarians don't know where to get business reference assistance. And uh, with our Cabal project, we sort of turned this uh, in an interesting light, um, thinking we don't necessarily need departmental colleagues to know how to train new librarians or train our replacements. Um, we as business librarians need to start training each other at inst different institutions uh, using that professional network. I had a great instruction librarian at my first job. Uh, he was the one who gave me Making Sense of Business Reference. I had never seen the book before in, in graduate school. And he was the one who suggested I take Business Reference 101. He was our humanities English uh, librarian, but he was aware of these things. And um, even with those useful classes like Business Reference 101, they can take their, I think it's a three-week curriculum. You, um, they're about $200, especially if you're a non-ALA member, as many people just starting might be. Um, and there's a need to plan ahead. You have to know that the course is being offered and be able to sign up for it uh, by, say, January 10th or early mid-August. 
And in my case, if my colleague had not suggested it, I and my dean hadn't covered the cost, I think I would have totally missed the course. Um, and other than that course and making sense of business reference, right off the bat, I was I was on my own. Um, so with the shared experience, this isn't a rare experience, as I said, and many of us in Cabal, I think, thought the same thing. Um, we got together in the spring of 2020 to discuss what we envisioned as sort of a, as a comprehensive, segmented, and self-guided curriculum for business library practitioners. Um, and we hoped our definition of that was early career and non-business librarians looking to get up to speed quickly and get a broad breadth of um, what business reference looks like. And we also hoped, hoped to pair the modules alongside mentor pairing, since we were a very active and Cabal is still very active um, as a regional business group, which would enable practitioners uh, not only to work through the curriculum, but also get assistance from experienced business librarians. And I'll note that we mostly uh, drew from making sense of business reference on the next slide. We'll, you'll see how our structure and you might sort of see the echo of that, as well as the new at the time newly published business research competencies for our programming. So on the next slide, um, I put together just a quick explanation of our structure. It was eight self-guided modules, so sort of eight chapters of, of a program. Um, and after we decided what the content was, the task force members each took a, essentially each took one module and uh, produced it, and then we shared it with each other for editing. So the curriculum had two parts. Uh, the first series was the first five modules, um, which we labeled as foundations. And then the second series were three uh, sort of more advanced techniques, advanced subjects. So there was sort of a recursive element to this, um, but we were mostly trying for it to be accessible and simple. So as I show here, um, modules consisted of three parts, a 10 minute recorded lecture, uh, about 10 minutes, five to 10, I would say, a series of business scenario questions that were provided and written by members of Cabal who had experience in, um, you know, basically just ripped from our email inboxes or from Buslib or from our Cabal listserv. Um, and then a database metrics table, basically pr providing information on, so if you're interested in this subject or if you're looking for ways to apply um, what you just learned, what databases can you find this in? Um, if you're inheriting a, a to Z database list and you have no sense of what these databases are for and you're having to make cuts or you have the option of getting a new database or looking to revamp um, how much you build your database subscriptions based on some sort of information matrix. And then uh, on the right here, I have the eight modules, the uh, first types of business information, public versus private, ownership types, for-profit and non-for-profit, what is an industry, consumer information, NAICS codes, and then navigating business questions, sort of a, a, a business reference, intro to business reference. And then right at the bottom there, I have an example of one of the business reference, um, business scenario questions that we had built in. So that would probably fit in with something like, um, it, that could be in the consumer business, consumer information module or something around the NAICS module. Um, and it was just broad questions like that, sort of to prompt uh, the practitioners to go back because we all know how much of learning in this field is, is the act of, of doing business librarianship. And then, as I said earlier, we intended to pair this with um, some support from an actual business librarian, a member of Cabal, who could walk through, help answer questions, help contextualize the static information that was on the slides as well as in the um, module broadly.
All right. And so if Nancy, if you'll advance, I'll just talk a little bit about our after action. Um, first of all, big thank yous to the members of this team. Um, Elizabeth Price, Allison's Jenny Roach, Ellen Krupar, Jennifer Bocher, Natalie Burklaff, uh, Shauna Gass, who I saw in the chat, and Shmuel uh, Bengad. Um, uh, as I said, I was I was probably a business librarian for six months when the call went out. And in some ways, it's not to get like too meta about it, but I especially appreciated this project because as a new business librarian, it gave me an opportunity to work with business reference insiders. And just having a basic conversation at the organizational level um, about what how we define our field, how we you know, uh, define our information horizon as business librarians. Uh, it was really helpful for me getting up to speed. I read through everyone's modules, uh, and and it they in some ways does still provide the underpinnings for how I explain uh, business reference questions to my students. So I've mentioned this a few times. Um, considering things that we did well, things that I really appreciated about this. Um, we sought to create a comprehensive but accessible curriculum, something that uh, that fire hose drinker could get in and uh, work through piecemeal or work through in total and just get a very uh, workable understanding of how we define business librarianship. Um, but we sort of failed at the rollout section. So uh, summer of 2020 caused a number of uh, curveballs and our team sort of fell off in communication. Um, but I've known multiple members of our team and uh, we shared this with Cabal at large who have been able to repurpose the curriculum or use the curriculum in settings that we didn't initially expect. Um, in the case of mine and a few others, uh, it became the basis for reference student worker training, undergraduate student worker training, or students who had um, who were currently going through graduate work who were working at the library in either a walk-up reference or a reference support um, position. And as I note, I, I often will review the modules before my instruction planning. And I don't know how many times I've gone back to the consumer information, Natalie's consumer information slide deck, um, as just providing a, a basic explanation of market research, market segment analysis, um, and fitting in our databases into the basic structure that she provided in the slides. And so to me, while it's not a complete project, uh, the Cabal Business Bootcamp is is sort of is a proof of concept about intervention work that can be done within the context of say a regional group or a national uh, professional group um, to people that have already entered our profession. And I think when we couple it with an organizational's net an organization's network, which is a big part of these groups now, especially brass, um, we've really strengthened networking. I think this curriculum would be a great launching point for mentorship and for helping usher people into our groups. <laughs> Thank you, Teddy. And now I'll take the last few minutes just to quickly talk about the INLS 709 business information class that I taught at UNC Chapel Hill in spring 23. And it looks like um, one of my former students, Griffin, is in the popping up in the chat. Um, hello, Griffin. So this is the old um, this is the old class that was previously taught by Bizla Giants like Diane Strauss and Rita Moss. So I had no small shoes to fill. Uh, I finished library school in 2017 and went straight into my first business information job. I was one of those chose business and I learned on the job primarily. In 2020, 21, when Strauss's, the fourth edition of Strauss's handbook came out, I was reading it and I realized as I was reading it with a few years of experience that the, my, my work experience helped me get more out of Strauss's handbook because before reading a text like that was just a list of databases 
But then when I had some reference questions in mind that popped up, I'm like, oh, the economic census could help me answer that question from two months ago. Um, that I was like, that's really cool. Content is meaningfully uh, meaningfully applied and contextualized. So I thought about what could it have been like if I had taken a business information class in my library school degree. So I reflected on these three questions. Could the basics of business information be taught meaningfully? How, what are ways that I could have benefited from a systematic semester long class? And could it have been organized in a way that my professional learning journey has turned out so far? So in the summer of 22, last year, I expressed interest in reviving this old business information course that was last offered as a one semester, one credit half semester class in spring 2016. I spent fall 22 completely redesigning the course. Like the previous presentation, I was locked into the course title and catalog description, but had complete freedom to completely redo the syllabus. I taught the class in the spring semester uh, 8 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays for 75 minutes. So that was another difference. It was in-person synchronous. And this summer, after this presentation, I will be updating the syllabus so that I can hopefully teach the class again next spring and iterate. And so then what we did in the class, we had, I, we focused on practical application. The course was structured by content area and we learned information sources as applied to the content areas as we worked through reference questions that I called information problem sets that we workshopped in class as well as students completing sets on their own. We also often opened class with whatever Biz Lavelle question came through my digest the night before as I was checking my email for the first time in the morning. Um, one of the major assignments was a resource assessment and proposal. Why should we spend money on this resource and not that one? Making a, budget, you know, a, a collections decision proposal to a non-business specialist. They had a business research project. They could choose between the Shark Tank style entrepreneurship pitch or do a, analyze a company and then research an industry to make an economic development analysis report for a particular region or state. In class, we did some research case studies. Uh, I was very excited that to, to, to build a case study examining bus, the convenience store Bucky's expansion across the Southeast US. And in the process of spending the class, re, class period researching this, uh, it was a way to model an information pathway, demonstrating my thought processes and ways that I approach questions like this um, as we learned together. I was also really pleased with this Bizinfo and Contact speaker series that I put together that pulled, that pulled together four information professionals from four different library contacts, business, uh, public, corporate, special, and academic libraries so that students could be introduced to the broad application of business research skills. I also had students do a personal deadline selection in order to, um, so that they could select due dates that complemented their personal academic and work schedules. And that also was further modeling professional practice since as information professionals or librarians, many of our deadlines are self-imposed and enforced. And then here's a link to um, my sample syllabus that I think Teddy's also popping in the chat, thank you and fuller descriptions of the assignment. Um, so how it went, I had four students overall. I think it was a positive experience for the students as well as for me as the instructor. And they also made some great recommendations for improvements for the next time. And I also, one of my former students is now completing a field experience project with me this summer. And um, they're creating static database tutorials in LibGuides that will complement all of my subjects, guys. Because like many folks, I am one of one person with thousands of students. And finally, uh, teaching made me a better business librarian. Teaching forced me to really understand how I do my job and why I do my job the way that I do. 
And I had to be able to articulate that to the students so that they could hopefully learn some stuff. And they taught me a lot as well. And so for this final, for the, Q, the Q and A and this like discussion section, kind of melting into each other of um, what are things that you do, what are things that questions you have, et cetera. Take it away, Teddy. All right, so we have uh, sort of an overarching question, uh, which is how do you support business librarians and how do you want, and if you are a new business librarian, how would you want support? Um, there's a survey link at the bottom here. I put it in the chat as well. Um, and if anyone wants to discuss um, sort of in light of the first half of our conversation, what responsibilities might our professional organizations and associations have? How have you participated in that? Um, what what sort of report have you received therefore or from there? And feel free to fill out the survey link. I'll, I'll review those as well. Um, or if you just want to uh, unmute and, and speak up, we're happy to hear from you. Hi, Jennifer. I see your hand. Uh, there we go. I, I really do believe that regional groups are so important um, because it's, it's, you know, this is how we get to meet each other. You know, we're not going to ALA at midwinter and annual or anything, but it's that connection. It's, it's, you know, I don't, you know, networking is a word, but it, it regional groups allow you to develop that skills and the network to be able to say, what are you doing? How are you doing this? And 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 I'm so happy that we have regional networks. We need a stronger one in the West. Um, and, and I mean, from Kansas all the way to the coast. Um, so if anybody's out there uh, in looking to group together, definitely do that. Library schools are not library schools anymore. They're information schools, public policy schools. So uh, I, I wish that we could push out and have library schools really look at the curriculum and say subject specialties, specialty are so important, but they're not. Um, that's just what I have to say about that. Um, and, and I, remember, I will right say, now, Jennifer, as I was, so Jennifer, as I was, um, when I went to the associate dean at Bill, who's in charge of curriculum, to pitch, pitch teaching the class again, um, my, 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 where am I, where am I going to My argument was, there's so many jobs and if you want your, if you want the um, the employment upon graduation rate to be higher, like you should be offering this class. Um, and I didn't even have to dive into all of that. That I was very fortunate in with the with our current like library school administration to get a lot of support for reviving this class. Um, so it's not all doom and gloom. Um, it is it is a really challenging landscape for sure. Um, but there are there is is some some glimmers of hope. Tim says in the chat, it's hard because I'm a functional role advocate and we are one of the few specialties that warrants subject expertise. Yeah. Another thing people uh, um, someone may mention of on the um, form is that the new brass um, business librarians group has been something that they uh, recommend that they've appreciated. Um, and I can definitely see that uh, breast networking, uh, new new member roundtable, all of that. Um, moving into our sort of second part, um, does anyone have other experiences supporting new business librarians or training new business librarians within library schools? Um, 
does anyone have any memories from uh, recent library school experiences that they they'd like to share? Um, I'm happy to talk. I'm always happy to talk. Um, but one thing, hi, Jennifer. Um, one thing that she knows me from other things. Um, I've been in the profession for over 30 years now. And one thing Jennifer had mentioned in one of her workshops was how important it is to learn about Tableau and JSON and these software that basically are a barrier to our users at getting information. And I've taken those classes and I am not an expert in any way, shape or form about how that software works. But I will say that, that having taken those um, online classes through LinkedIn, um, self-improvement has really helped me to understand the finished product and be able to look at data, um, information graphics and stuff that have come out of the software uh, more critically. Like I would have maybe chosen this piece of data to look at this way. Um, so I just wanted to mention that uh, Jennifer had a great suggestion there about these different software. When I started in the business, it was just Excel. Everything was Excel, Excel, Excel. And now things are, ha have definitely developed and changed. And there are so many barriers to free information because if, if in order to get the information, you have to know how to use the software. Um, and that can be sometimes a barrier to our patrons, to our students, and also to ourselves. And I, the other thing I would say is it's so important to not be vulnerable and ask questions. I mean, I've been in the profession for God long time. And um, some of the newer um, um, employees that are hired just seem to be very, they, they want to look like experts and they're not willing to ask the questions that then would help everyone learn. And uh, so I just want to say, be vulnerable, ask questions. Um, and if nobody knows the answer, that's okay. You know, it's okay not to know the answer, but the process is just as important. Mm -hmm. Nancy, I have a question yeah, for you. Finding... If, you're willing, if you're willing to speak, uh, Kimberly mentioned something that um, sort of along the lines of learning to uh, understand the software or the you know the actual material through through learning rather than being the the um, professor. Um, you said it helped teaching helped you become a better business librarian. Um, were there any specific elements of that that sort of echo what Kimberly was saying from the other side? Wait, was that for me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, was there something about, can you say that again? You made mention for teaching made you a better business librarian. I wondered if you could talk about that a little more and about how having sort of a training the trainer um, would help you in the reference encounter. Learning about knowledge. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, I've written before on the Biz Liberatory blog about um, the, this, this phrase, the mind of a beginner, that the I was counting yesterday with Teddy. This is my sixth year at Carolina and my seventh as a business librarian, which is not as long as some folks, but longer than I realized. And I work training student graduate student workers teaching this class is excellent for reminding me that I didn't used to always know how to do this stuff and that there's still stuff that I don't know um and so having to slow down and see business information from the perspective as much as possible from the perspective of a beginner and say okay what is the most important foundational thing for someone new to this to know. And like many folks responses on the Padlet, I think one of the most important things for someone new to know is where to ask for, where to ask questions. And as part of teaching, as part of working with students in a regular reference interaction, 
you know, modeling the it's okay to ask questions that, you know, we'd have a class discuss in 709, we'd have a class discussion about something. I'm like, that's a great question. I don't know. Let's Google it. And when I'm meeting with an economics honors thesis student who's wanting to research some some sort of economics model that I might have learned about for a day 15 years ago. Um, I'm like, I don't remember that. Can you explain it to me, please? <laughs> and, you know, modeling the, the, the curiosity and the, hey, let's learn things together. Uh, yes, I know stuff, but also you, the researcher, or you, the student, know stuff, and we're teaching each other. Thanks for sharing that. Um, early on in, in your response, you made mention of uh, writing on the biz laboratory, which I think pairs with this last bit of question we had. Um, contributing to continuing education and scholarly communication is a form of supporting new business librarians. Other things people mentioned were uh, brass offerings, the BizRef 101, um, LinkedIn Learning, teaching business information literacy, and then the, the Buslo LipServ ticker, um, the Beyond the Numbers, Federal Reserve, and a few other things. Um, are there any that people found specifically helpful uh, or have heard great feedback of that, that would like to discuss more? I myself, the Biz Laboratory, I, I've always appreciated or um, Brass Quarterly, just easy ways to to figure out what we're talking about, what capital B business librarians are talking about, and um, also as a form of of understanding who writes and who who I can speak to if I have ideas on research. That's how I met Nancy, actually reading the Biz Laboratory. Well, that and I was a guest speaker in one of your classes that yes. um, neither of us really remembers the other being there. Um, Yes, academic brass, the newsletter is good for practical, really great for practical tips. I, you, Tim, I use your um, entrepreneurship research when makes isn't enough. I use that on the regular um, from a few years ago. So that's, that's fab. Other questions or thoughts? We have a couple of minutes left. <laughs> Tim says that he's, um, I'm blushing, lol. <laughs> I am going to advance the slide deck once. Um, we do have a few references and resources. I want to, I did write a blog post about um, teaching 709. So that's um, referenced here. And then also earlier this year, Edward Lim wrote a really excellent article, Liaison Year One Redux, a snapshot of the academic business librarian professional development landscape. I highly recommend going to check out Edward's article as well. I have a quick question. Shanna, for you, can you say more about Nancy, Shanna, can you say more about what a collective online practicum is? I've not heard of that. Um, so I saw a panel at ACRL about this, and I need to chase down who it was. Uh, it it may have had something to do with residency programs. It was not specifically about business. I know that. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the folks in Simmons were involved, but I need to verify that. And I was thinking, I, this is such a common need. Is there, I mean, I need to know more, you know, to even explain it. But I think the idea was it was an online, like either practicum or internship and like, people from different schools were able to help support this. 
thought that was cool. So. Yeah, I would be interested oh, in talking. Totally. And yeah. thank you. I'd be interested in learning about that and um, talking talking about it because, like this, like we were talking about with the like the previous presentation, what Petty and I have talked about today, like this, it's a it's a collective problem, and we need to all like we're like we can't just or like one person can't do all the things and like we need to work like you know collaborate and work together on on affecting this um change um jennifer bought both asked me if i got paid to do the class and if it counts for tenure um i have an others appointment in the school of information and library science and a lot of unc librarians do teach in cells as adjuncts um, and i'm not on the tenure track so that is um we did our parallel, a parallel reappointments process, but I am not, not tenured. Wow, so you've given us both all a lot to think about. Thank you, Nancy and Teddy. Um, this is a great discussion and it looks like some, uh, someone to continue it offline. Um, and you've given a lot for both new librarians and uh, I think uh, those who want to be mentors uh, with lots of experience um, points to to think about. So I guess we'll be um, wrapping up this session and um, there will be another session in the coming hour. So if you want to, please stick around. There'll be some great music. Um, and I think we're ready to uh, to go. Thanks again, Nancy and uh, Teddy. Thank you.